Okay, everybody, so we're back uh, for another round of in Intro to Cinema 4D. Um, today we're going to be talking about our first project, which is a trophy project to create a trophy. And um, to do this, um, I'm going to introduce a few more uh, modeling techniques over the next couple class periods. And the goal in this project is to create a trophy of some sort um, where you can... Um, acknowledge some sort of achievement or accomplishment. It can be ridiculous, uh, you know, it can be absurd, ironic, however you like. All right, so uh, last time we built a snowman. Today we're going to build a, a little trophy cup, and um, my trophy today is going to be a, a trophy to uh, coffee. So I'm going to have a gilded coffee cup on top of a marble pilaster, and uh, I think that should be pretty nice. Okay, so let's go in. First thing to do is to drop in a cylinder. Um, right away, uh, I've uh, clicked my garage shading lines on. Uh, so you can just click that, and you can see lines appear. So you can see the segments. Uh, remember, in the Attributes Manager, you can change things uh, very quickly and easily. Uh, make sure that um, uh, you know you're you're working with the parameters that are you know represent representative of a cup of coffee, right? So we want to think about the proportions of that. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to make uh, this a little bit wider. You know, I think uh, my cup of coffee is going to be a little bit stacked. I'm going to change this to 120 centimeters, um, which is pretty good. And um, and then uh, oh, one thing I wanted to mention about this is, that, you know, I don't want this to be sharp edges. I'd like it to be a little bit rounded. So in order to do that, um, if we go to um, the uh, fillet or fillet, however you'd like to pronounce it. If you click this on, it's going to give you rounded, smoother edges. So what it does is it breaks up uh, that curve into a number of segments. So if you only had one segment here, it would be angular, right? If you have more than that, it's going to be rounded. So you know, three segments is going to give you more of a rounded curve. Uh, you can also take this little grabber here, and you can change the um, the radius based on that. You can make it really large and it gets more geometric. If it's closer together, it's very thin. And I think that this is going to be better, more of a thin kind of radius. So I'm going to make this 12. Well, you know, you can do it visually or you can type in the coordinates in the attributes manager. Um, so you see we have these uh, segments across the piece and uh, and now we have, you know, pretty rounded, nice looking standard coffee mug. All right. Um, so what I want to do now is to create some sort of hollow in it. Um, now, Typically, objects like cylinders have caps, and if we turn the caps off, you can see that uh, it makes it so that uh, you can see through it. It has holes in it, essentially. But the walls, notice the walls are like paper thin, thinner than paper, actually. So that's not quite what we want. We want to maintain a thick wall uh, base for our um, mug, so we want to keep those caps on. What we want to do with this is to create a hollow in a different way. So what I'm going to do is actually extrude a portion out of the center of it. In order to do that, I need to first make this object editable. So if I click this button at the top left, make editable, the shortcut is to hit the C button. Uh, if you click this, uh, you'll notice that in the Objects Manager, the little icon of the cylinder goes away and suddenly it turns into this polygon shape. It shows you the polygon. Uh, the lines and the points, all right, edges and the points. So <clears throat> now we know it's editable. Also, you don't have as many um, attributes anymore. I uh, have a different sort of palette of attributes that you can deal with. So uh, we need to make it editable. Um, the next thing is we're going to select a certain amount of polygons to extrude the in or out. So if you take the selection tool here, this is the live selection tool, and um, the next thing is that, you know, you notice you can't really select anything quite yet. So what we need to do is change it from object mode or the model mode to the polygons mode. So you click the polygons button, then suddenly notice that these become interactive. So what I want to do is, uh, you know, in the center here, just click and drag around so I select all of those um, polygons to create that circle top. And what I can do here is I can extrude it down. Now to do that, go to mesh. Create tools and extrude. Okay, or you can simply hit the D key. If you hit the D key, it'll give you the same button. Also, notice in this palette up at the top, next to the rotate tool, if you click and hold this down, you can see these are all the tools that have been used recently. 
So you, know, you can switch back and forth between tools there as well once you've selected it. So the D key activates the extrude. Now extrude, what you don't, what I do is I sort of click outside of the box, click and hold it down, and then if you move left or right, you can see that we can extrude down into the object. So what I'll do is just drag this down, you know, a little bit. Um, I can then offset it as well in the Attributes Manager and so I can get a more precise view of what I want to see. Now to do this, what I want to do is click on the Viewport menu and select, let's say, the front and uh, zoom in a little bit here. And now I can just type in some coordinates. I think this is going to be 200, you know, it's 200 centimeters tall, so I think if it's like 190 centimeters, negative 190, so down from the top, it's going to bring us down to a nice kind of a base, you know. So this is pretty good, kind of even with that uh, thickness of the walls. Um, and, and I can click back to my perspective menu, and now I can see that I have um, a nice, you know, cylindrical cup. Okay, so we have the cup part. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is make uh, the handle. And to do this, I'm going to drop in a torus. So here's my torus. Obviously, it's much too big, and it's in the wrong orientation. So in the Attributes Manager, I can click on, let's try X+, plus, which is OK, and maybe Z+. Plus. That's a little better. Then I can kind of work around it a bit. OK, so here's my... Um, Taurus. Now it's much too big, and of course it's a complete circle. We only need a half of it. So I'm going to go to Slice first. I'm going to click Slice, and notice it cuts it in half. Now it's going from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. Now I can change that if I were to change, turn this, let's say, to 90 degrees. Okay? And then maybe I'll go, instead of to 180, I'll go up another 90 degrees to 270. Disappeared for a second there. Okay, let's try again. 270, and uh, there we go. So we have half of the handle in the right orientation. Of course, it's much too tall. So if we go to object and we shrink this down, let's start with a ring radius. Let's try 40. Uh, disappeared there. So I'm gonna drag this over so I can see it better. 40 is not bad. Uh, so start with 40, and then let's change the pipe radius from 40 to. Let's try 10. Okay, not too bad. A little bit too small now. So let's actually let's make this 15, and let's change the ring radius to 60. That's better. Okay, so now we have um, our handle of the cup. Now, one thing to make sure is when you look inside of here, you can move it. What you want to do is kind of move it so that see. See, now it's it's poking out through the wall there. We don't want that, so we want to move it just beyond that just behind the wall and then just make sure that it's not you know coming out so it's still attached in some degree in some ways okay so here's our very basic coffee cup that has been extruded and um, two models have been you know quickly placed together now let's name this thing and label it so I'm going to label this part the cup and I'll label this part the handle spelled correctly hopefully. Okay, and then uh, the last thing I want to do is um, group this thing. All right, so I'm just going to change my hierarchy here a little bit. There we go. Okay, group this thing. Okay, and objects, group objects. There we go. So now I have a null. I'm going to call this coffee cup. Open it up. We have the have cup and the handle. Everything now. So now with this, you know, grouped, I can just click on the coffee cup and I can move this around if I need to. The last thing is, I notice that the axis is not quite in the center of the cup. I want the axis to be in the center of the cup rather than the center of uh, the entire object. So what I can do here is simply go down to this button, which is the edit axis. All right, enable axis. Click on this. And now I can move this, act, we'll click on the object, model button first, there we go. Now I can move this over into the center, all right? And just to double check, let's go to the um, top view and just make this right in the middle, there we go. Okay, this will help out when I'm lining things up later on. Okay, so I've got my coffee cup, I'm ready to go. 
the next thing I want is a base for this, for the trophy. So I'm going to hide this for right now. If I, this little button right here, and these two little buttons, the top one is the editor view, the bottom one is the renderer view. I'm going to click this once, and click it twice, and it'll disappear. Now it's still there. If I render this, you can see it's still there because it's visible in the renderer. But uh, I'm going to, um, you know, I just want to um, work with this in the... Um, in the editor mode, right? So I, I don't want to be able to see that coffee cup while I'm working on the other part. Okay, next thing is the base. What I want to do here, I'm going to start with a simple cube. Okay, I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And um, then I'm just going to work with a series of extrusions to sort of model this out. All right, so here what I want to do is um, I'm just going to go through a, a series of extrusions that will help me to make a, you know, a little bit of a decorative base. So I'm going to start with this flattened cube. I've just grabbed the arrow, the little handlebars here, and squashed it down a bit. I'm going to make it editable, and it has very few polygons because I haven't assigned any other segments to it, which is good. Um, I'm going to make sure. Oh, make sure this is turned to off, so it's not enabled. Because I want with the object and not just the uh, axis. All right. So now I have this object. I'm going to go to my selection tool, click on Live Selection. I'm going to click on polygons, okay, to make this active. I'm just going to grab the top one. Now, if I extrude this, with the D key, you see it's just going to go up. It's just going to make it a taller cube. So that's not quite what I want. What I want to do is, is you know, make this look like a like steps, you know, like a kind of stepped going up to the trophy piece. So what I can do here is go to mesh, create tools, extrude inner. All right. You can also hit the I key. Uh, to make this appear. And what this will do, same sort of thing with the extrude, just by dragging kind of outside of the box, click and hold and drag left to right, you can um, make a new polygon in the same um, same plane as that original polygon, um, and keeping the proportions, it will sort of shrink it down. So if I do this, then what I can do is take this, then hit the D key to get the extrude tool, and now I can extrude up like this. All right. So that gives me an option to, to do some steps. Now, with this selected, I could change to the scale tool and shrink it down so I get a little bit of an angle going. That could be nice. Uh, you know, if it's not quite tall enough, I can hit the move tool and kind of stretch it up a little bit, depending on how you want it to be. So you have some opportunities there. You can also move it, offset it to make it askew if, you, if you'd like. That's a possibility as well. So I'm just going to do a series here of extrude inner, hit the I key. Extrude the inner, extrude up the D key. That's going to make the extrude tool, and I can do a whole series of steps for my trophy. All right, there we go, and maybe one more. Extrude inner, and a little bit taller. Scale this down a little bit. Okay. So, not too bad so far. Um, I'm going to uh, get this into position, and then I just want to put the coffee cup right on top of it. All right, so let's label this base. And then let's get our coffee cup back into view. So here's our coffee cup. There we are. Um, I want to actually just put the base, kind of zero it a little bit. So I'm going to go to my front view and make sure the object, um, the model button is clicked here. All right, and uh, I'm just gonna kind of screw this a little bit. So let's see, move it up. Right about there, it looks pretty good. And then <clears throat> with the cup, I can move the cup as well, click on the coffee cup. And put this closer to the top. So I'm gonna put this up here, kind of place it on the base there. And then also uh, shrink it down a little bit, right? So scale this whole thing down a little bit smaller. There we go. And bring it back into view. Looks pretty good. Let's just get zoom in here. Okay. So click. That looks pretty good. Okay. Let's check it out in perspective view. All right. Not too bad. Pretty good little trophy there. All right. So render it out. Last thing I wanted to show you guys a little bit was just working with some um, preset materials. So to do this, 
Let's go to the content browser. If you go over here to the objects palette, click down one button to the content browser. Um, what you'll end up with is um, we get to this menu. If you go click, double click on presets. Uh, I am using which one am I using? Prime, I think. Let's try Prime. Uh, yeah, good materials. Basic gives you a nice suite of different materials. So to use these, if you just double click, it'll show up in your objects um, or materials manager. And if you wanted to, you can always go in and change things. You don't have to keep, uh, you know, this precise uh, set. You could sort of change it, change the color a little bit, or change it subtly. You could add other elements to it. So it's nice to use these defaults and then kind of mess around with them a little bit. Uh, click back to the objects palette take the material, drop it right on top of the coffee cup there, and uh, render it out. There you go. My nice gilded coffee cup. And then let's use a, another material for the base. Um, let's, I like this marble. I'm going to double click this. And back to the objects palette. Grab this material. And you could actually just go right to the model as well. If it's highlighted like that, place it on there. There you go. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to actually rotate my cup a little bit because... I like this three-quarter view better. There we go. Okay, now let's render this out. Notice the uh, material. It doesn't look so great. It's a little striated there. It's not quite the texture I was thinking it was. Part of this has to do with the way that it's been mapped or projected onto the surface. So to change that, if you go here, this is the base we're working with. If you click on the material in the Objects palette, it brings up a menu in the Attributes Manager. And part of that menu, if you go to the tag, has to do with the projection. So if you click on this right now, it's the standard UVW mapping. Now I'm going to change this to a different type of mapping. This is essentially how the material is projected onto the object. And in this case, this object uses a material that includes an image. Um, let's just take a look at that quickly. If we double click this, you can see that here we have an image that's been used. Right? It's a basic, it's this basic 16 JPEG, right, for the texture. So <clears throat> When using image um, uh, materials, you want to make sure that you you know play around with the projection to see if, if it models just right. So again, back here, click on the material. I'm going to change this mapping from uh, the UVW mapping to cubic, and it's going to be more of a you know see you can see it's kind of a similar projection on either side all the way around. And if I render this out, it's a, you know looks a little bit better overall sort of more standardized. So that works pretty well. But you can just mess around with different types of projections, you know, if it's cylindrical, it's going to change it a little bit. You can see here, changes it a little bit. Notice we can see the line, the seam. Uh, you could click on seamless, and then that would be a different sort of view. So there's different ways of, um, of dealing with the, um, of the texture. I'm just going to use this cubic one for now because I think it works pretty good. Um, I didn't show this in class today, but just to finish this model up, I'm going to do a quick floor. I'll put a floor in and I'm going to put in a quick light. The light's going to come in on the bottom. I'll talk more, a lot more about lighting inside the model. Place is at a zero, 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 right? So I just want to, um, you know, bring this up, bring this forward. This way it looks pretty good. Click on the light quickly, quickly. Uh, add a shadow, soft shadow. There we go. Click on the base. And zoom into that. All right, let's see this thing now. Okay, much better. Still has some work, but now I have my trophy. All right, so your trophy can utilize a series of techniques that I'll be introducing over the course, uh, the next few courses. Um, what I want you to do is think a lot about content. What are you making? What are you presenting? Um, what are the icons on the image of the um, trophy, and, uh, and how is it formed? So think about it like a little sculpture, a little monument, um, and think about how to include a sense of humor or irony in the work. Any questions, just email me. Thanks for now. Bye-bye.